Lissa Productions. In lab 10, we're going to be using op amps to build filter circuits. So the basic filter circuit we're going to look at here has the op amp. The non-inverting input is grounded. The inverting input comes in through some input impedance. And there's a feedback impedance given here that connects the output to the inverting input. And the gain function, which is basically our filter function, is, base, is given by ZF over ZN. We're going to explore this circuit with various different components. We'll put resistors and capacitors for the feedback and the input impedance. And we'll be able to mimic the behavior of circuits that we had early in the lab, in lab early in the course in lab four. We looked at high pass and low pass filters, integrating and differentiating circuits. And we'll do that by various combinations of resistors and capacitors here. The interesting thing is that if we have resistive components, this doesn't have to be one in the pass band. We can have the feedback bigger than the input. We can get a gain that's bigger than one. We can attenuate things. We're not limited to one. It may be convenient to set the gain to 10 for some high pass filter. So the output in the high pass mode is 10 times the input. One other thing we'll do here is we will also, we don't even have to just put impedances there. We'll look at a circuit where we put a, a diode there. And the diode has an exponential IV curve. And so that leads to a logarithmic dependence of the output voltage on the input voltage. So we'll measure this logarithmic amplifier in the lab as well. So now let's go down to the lab and have a look at these. In lab 10, we're going to be using the op amp to build active filters. If we think back to lab 4, we used resistors and capacitors and inductors to build passive filters. The advantage of an active filter is that we can get large gain. We can also avoid the problem of impedance matching when we try to chain these various filters together. So the filters we're building will be very similar to the ones we built in lab 4. We'll build high pass and low pass filters, which will involve resistors and capacitors. The circuits can also be shown to integrate and differentiate like we saw in lab four, and we'll study those properties. And we'll see that while these circuits behave very well, so the main limitation of these, uh, these active filters is the open loop gain of the op amp. When the gain of the circuit that we have approaches or wants to exceed the open loop gain, it's limited by the open loop gain, and the filter will stop functioning the way that we're expecting. But for very many circuits, these are very, very valuable, they're very, very useful circuits. And they, are, they, they don't have the input or output impedance that limits that we had before. And we can build them so that we have non-unity non gain, such as times 10 or times 100 over reasonable regions. So let's go in and look at what we've set up here. So as noted, in this lab, we're going to be setting up various active filters. We've got here a low-pass filter set up. So the feedback goes through this resistor here. Input is a resistor and capacitor in series. You can see the input coming in here. All the grounds are tied together. In this circuit, one of the inputs is grounded. Input signal, output signal on here. And we'll look at those on the scope. So then we'll map out the frequency response of these various filters. The low pass filter, we expect to have some gain that's one or bigger than one for low frequencies. And we get above the characteristic frequency, the gain will start to fall off. If we flip this around and put a resistor and capacitor in parallel as the feedback and the, simply a resistor as the input, we get a high pass filter. The high pass filter is going to actually hit the open loop gain, so there'll be some frequency above which it won't actually work. And the last thing we'll do is we'll replace this feedback resistor with a feedback diode and make measurements there. So to summarize, in this lab, we've looked at active filters where we've used an op amp various resistors and capacitors to reproduce the filters that we did in, in lab four. The other thing we've done is we've used the op amp to make something even more interesting, a, a, a logarithmic amplifier. By using a diode, which has an exponential response, we're able to create a circuit whose output is the natural logarithm of the input. And so that may be useful if we're looking over for voltages over wide ranges in magnitude. Logarithm shrinks those down, so they may be useful there. And it's often used in photo detectors and so forth. So these circuits are interesting. And they're actually very powerful filters that you might actually wind up using in an experimental situation. They're, they're actual valuable circuits that you have.